Hey everybody, my name is Emily and I am the self-proclaimed crazy worm lady. I got into worm composting, also known as vermicomposting, back in May. Um, I was starting a garden outside and I was researching organic gardening and um, how to organically fertilize my plants. I came across information on vermicomposting, which I had never heard of before, um, but it fascinated me that I could turn my food scraps into um, readily available nutrients um, for my garden. So I did my outdoor garden this year without the worm castings. I hadn't really started yet, um, but I decided to pursue this anyway as something that I can um, use in my indoor garden, which I also have set up now. So um, let me tell you a little bit about what I have going on. I have a Worm Factory 360 that I started back in May and um, I started with a pound or a thousand red wiggler composting worms and I just fell in love with it. They compost very quickly and I was able to fertilize some of my indoor plants um, with the castings. I have already harvested three or four trays now um, and I've been using them regularly on my plants. So after my worm factory was up and running, that again was in May, I started some Rubbermaid bins in July and I started with about 500 worms um, per bin at that time. So um, that's pretty much where I'm at at this point. So today I'm going to take you on a tour of my indoor garden, my composting space here in my guest bedroom, and um, I'm going to set up two experimental bins um, that I hope to do weekly updates on. I'm going to do two three-gallon totes, um, I'm going to set them up identically, and I'm going to feed one of them um, with blended food scraps and the other one with whole food scraps to see how quickly they compost, if one of them composts quicker than the other. So that is the plan for today. I will set up those bins, and um, let's get started on my tour of my indoor garden downstairs. Okay, so here's a quick peek at my indoor gardening space. It's um, kind of a very novice setup, but I am experimenting and I'm learning along the way. In the front here, I have some microgreens. In the back, I have um, some tomato plants, a jalapeno plant, two bell pepper plants. And then in this far back corner, I have some peas and some lettuce. I have two um, citrus trees here, the one, um, Meyer lemon in the front and the orange in the back, uh, which I need to finish potting up because it's starting to fall on me. Then in the very back over here, I have my carrots, my beets. I have some herbs up front here. I'm getting ready to add some cilantro and lavender as well as uh, oregano in here, but I already have parsley, basil, and thyme. Then in this bag, I have potatoes growing. And, you know, this is really a novice setup, but I'm learning and it's actually been pretty successful so far, all considering. So I have these um, two LED lights on each side. They're the blue and red spectrum lights. And we will take a peek at this again in the future, but I just wanted you to get an idea of where I'm using some of my compost and how I'm able to successfully garden indoors as well. So here's a quick tour of my indoor composting space. I've got my two um, three gallon totes, so we're gonna get ready and set up here shortly. I have my um, gallon jug that I have punctured a few holes in the top so that I don't overwater anything. I've got a little box here with a mister bottle. Uh, it has my little rake in the back that I use to go through the bins, some organic garden lime that I use if I feel like my pH balance is getting a little bit off. Then over here, I have my Worm Factory 360. I have my four Rubbermaid totes. In the back here, I have my little tote here that has some egg cartons and newspaper. That bag is full of shredded, shredded cardboard and newspaper as well. The burlap in the back that I found is um, one of the favorites of the worms to hang out in. Then down here 
I've got some cocoa core that's been expanded and moistened in this uh, pot I have here, and I have my shredder. So we will take a look into the bins and we will set up our new bins. Okay, so a quick tour of my Warm Factory 360. I've taken the lid off as well as the newspaper covering that I had over the top of this here. So this is the top tray, which is considered the feeding tray. Um, there's multiple trays below that are all, each one going down is more and more composted. That bottom tray will be able to be harvested here soon. So here's the bin. I've got lots and lots of shredded cardboard in here. I had a little bit of a mite problem. And when you add um, a lot more bedding, which paper is considered bedding, it tends to dry it out a little bit and uh, discourage some of the mites and fruit flies and things like that. So let's peel back and take a look at some of the worms in here. Usually I wear gloves, but I wear lunch lady gloves that crinkle and I didn't want to mess up um, the sound here. So you can see there's some worms over here and over here. Got some cardboard in here, but you can see there's some worms pretty active in this tray. Let's look up front. I know there's some food scraps over here, I do believe. So yeah, the worms seem pretty happy in here. Before long, this will be all completely composted. Um, you won't even know there was ever paper or anything in here. I don't usually dig this much in here, but you can see the worms look pretty healthy. So let's close this up and we'll take a look at my Rubbermaid bins. Okay, so here is one of my Rubbermaid bins. They're all essentially the same, so I'm only gonna show you one, I think. So this one's a little bit more composted than that tray in the Worm Factory 360, as you can see. We will take a look. It looks like some apple peels over here. And this is where I keep a little bit of burlap. The worms like to go in and out of the layers of the burlap, and a lot of times I find a lot of their cocoons laid in there. So I like to keep that on one side of my bin. Then over here, I think I fed this the other day. So we might see a lot of worms, I'm not really sure yet. So you can see a few down here. Oh, there we go, there's a lot more over here. I estimate that this bin has about, I don't know, roughly a pound of worms in it. But you can see there's there's more pretty active in here. Like I said, I fed this area the other day. So they're working on it. And I feed about once a week. So this is pretty much what my totes look like. I have holes drilled in the sides and the top of my totes. And that is to provide air because the worms breathe through their skin and you need to make sure that the bin doesn't get too wet um, and that the worms are able to breathe. If it gets too wet and too saturated, um, things can get anaerobic and it will smell and the worms can die. So it needs lots of aeration. So as you can see, there's holes all along the side here. And let me get my lid. there's holes in my lids as well. However, since I keep them stacked, the holes in the lids aren't always that important, um, but you definitely need to make sure there's plenty of aeration. So let's get ready and set up our new experimental bins. Okay guys, so here are the two bins that I'm setting up for our experiment. I didn't wanna bore you with uh, every little piece of the process, but I'm gonna go through it now quickly for you. So the cocoa core that I had in this pot over here, which had been pre-moistened, um, and when I squeezed it, I could just get a couple of drops of moisture out, and that's pretty much what you want. Um, you don't want it saturated, you don't want water pooling in the bottom, so that seemed to be pretty good. And what I did is I put that down in the bottom of each of these bins. Then I added just a layer of... Um, burlap that I just folded over once 
like I said, my worms seem to really like living in it. They go up and down between the layers, and um, I've just enjoyed using it. Of course, it's not necessary, but it is something that I do. I set these up identical. Prior to this video, um, I did drill holes all along the sides, and I also drilled holes in the lid. That way everything can get aerated well, and um, I'm just going to let these bins sit for a few days. Um, see how the moisture level, um, you know, kind of evens out in here, make sure it's good. And I'm going to harvest a tray from my worm factory, and I'm going to use um, those worms to put into these bins. So I'm going to try to weigh the worms when um, I'm finished harvesting, and I'll add an equal weight to each bin. Before that, however, I am going to blend some food scraps. I will weigh them as well and I will put them in this back bin and I'm going to use some whole just cut up food scraps um, in this bin. Again, equal weight. We'll try to keep it um, as scientific as possible. So I will be posting an update video um, hopefully early next week and I will show you how I added the food and I will show you um, adding the worms as well. So please post uh, questions below, comment, like the video, subscribe if you're interested in continuing to get updates from me, and uh, I look forward to giving you an update early next week. Thanks for coming along, guys. I will talk to you soon.